Agur in Proverbs 30 in verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. And the word pure could be translated as refined or flawless. It's a remarkable thing that a book written thousands of years ago can be as current and as profitable as the Bible. And Paul writing to Timothy declares that the Word of God is sufficient to equip us for every good work. Here's a little story that proves the case. Uh, some years ago I was involved with a ministry known as Good News on the Move. And uh, sometime after that we began another ministry in Canada called Cross Canada Cruisers in which we use classic cars as parables to explain the gospel. Ruined, rescued, restored. The story of a classic, the story of a life. And we used a particular painting done by a friend of ours, Glenn Hayes, that illustrated this with the before and after of the car and on the back the gospel message. I keep one of the cars here and we used it at one of the great car collectors uh, heavens uh, down on uh, what's called cruising the coast down in southern Mississippi. We had the car down there in 1955 Oldsmobile and um, a young disciple and I were traveling along handing these out five miles an hour uh, cars as far as you could see, classic cars slowly working their way across the coast. And this young man was handing out the cars. I got a bit ahead of him, so I pulled off to the side to wait for him. And as I was sitting there, two gentlemen came up and said to me, we're retired police officers from Detroit, Michigan, down here with our wives. And uh, we want to get down to the hotel further down the coast here, but the buses aren't running because there are so many cars. We wonder, would you mind taking us a mile down the road closer to the hotel? And so I said, get in. And the two fellows got in the car. And I said, now, before we pull out into traffic, I've got to tell you something. I take what Jesus says very seriously. You know, he got every decision in life right. And so I like to listen to what he has to say on every subject. And I've got to tell you that Jesus said, I can't do what you asked me to do. And they were flabbergasted. And they said, do you mean to say Jesus had something to say about this? And I said, he certainly did. Jesus said, if anybody asks you to take them a mile, you've got to take them farther than that. So I'm going to have to take you all the way to the hotel. And you've got Jesus to thank for that. Well, you can be sure I had their attention. As we pulled out into traffic, I began to explain the gospel to them. Well, the fellow in the front row, he was um, just kind of playing chess with me. But the fellow in the back, who Puerto Rican descent, uh, a really excitable little fella, he was so amazed and he kept saying, this is exactly what my wife and I have been talking about. We're going to die soon and, and we don't know where we're going and our religion doesn't give us any certainty at all. And he just kept saying, I can't believe this. God obviously arranged this because this is what my wife and I have been talking about. And so you know for sure that you're going to heaven? And so all the way down the road as I shared the gospel, he kept saying, I can't believe this. This is just exactly what we've needed to hear. As we pulled into the hotel, I handed them each a gospel CD. I'd appreciate it that you'd listen to this. And he said, absolutely, he said, as soon as my wife and I get back for dinner, we're going to sit down and listen to this CD. And so once again, the proof that the Word of God is sufficient to prepare us for every good work. And when we listen to what Jesus says, we discover again this principle that the Word of God is flawless.